Hey, this is Seth with In Demand Career. I show people how to get jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience or education. And that includes my very special guest today, Andrew, who is joining us from across the pond in the UK, where he graduated university and is now working in his first digital marketing agency position. Um, and I know I've been getting a lot of requests lately from people who want to know if this is possible outside of the U.S. It definitely is. And so I'm really thrilled for a Andrew to share his story with you. Thanks so much for being here, Andrew. Thank you, Seth. So a little bit about me is my name is Andrew. I'm fresh out of university. I'm 22. And uh, I didn't have much direction in my life after I graduated. But luckily, I found your course, Seth. And, you know, it's been moving in the right direction ever since. So, Andrew, why don't you tell people, what are you doing right now? What is your job or what is your position right now? So, my position is a digital marketing intern. I work with various PPC accounts, optimizing and um, planning any internal marketing for them. And I also dabble in SEO and CRO along with whatever other work that they decide to give me. That's fantastic. And you say that you're an intern, but you're, you're not, it's not really an internship because you are being paid. What are you getting paid? So I'm getting paid 20,000 uh, pounds in UK currency. And in the US, it's probably about 30K. That's right. So this is a great entry level position, getting his hands on accounts. And the other thing I always mention is in the UK and Europe, you also get those four weeks of vacation, <laughs> which we don't get in the US which is worth like, you know, that's why the salaries I think are a little bit lower in Europe because the employer is paying for you to basically ha have like normal work-life balance, like get some time to yourself during the year. So, so that has to be nice. Um, so why don't you um, just walk us through the process? We'll come back to the job in a minute, but you know, how did you, how did you find the course? Like what were you doing before you found the course and how did you find it? So what I was doing before the course is that I was working in catering and I've been working in catering for about five years. And after about five years or a very long time, you start to not enjoy it as much or not enjoy it at all. Uh, and I was like, I need something to do in regards to something digital or coding or computers. So then I was scouring through YouTube one day and it wasn't exactly your YouTube channel, but I can't remember whose YouTube channel it was. Um, but it was like how to get a job with zero experience or something like that. Um, it was one of your collaborations. I clicked on it and then I remember being skeptical and I ran through the demo. And then I also remember messaging you, but never getting a reply. But then I, was, but then I saw all your testimonials and I took a leap of faith bought the course, did all... <laughs> I'm so nervous, sorry. Oh, just, it's okay, man. Oh. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Believe me, I, uh, I know what it's like. And I appreciate you being on here. I know being, being young and also being British, because I think Americans are a little, have a li little bit of easier time just like kind of being loud and outspoken. That's my sense of the culture. So like we're, we're mm -hmm. like, we have no shame, but uh, you're doing great. Um, I actually was going to look that up because, yeah, I do try to answer like every message I get, but sometimes I just miss them because they come in. So uh, I wasn't too fast, really. Um, it's okay. I just, like I said, I can't remember who it was. It was, it was oh, like yeah. in engineering. June, and then... That's really funny. Actually, you wrote to me in June and you said you were considering the course and then you got your position after one and a half months and you had a great, sent me a great message. That's awesome. Yeah. I am sorry I didn't get back to you. Like I said, I really do try, but, and I know oh, I, it's more for the people. I kind of seem to were busy. I want them to know, but no, it's okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so, so what were we? What were we saying? Should we take it from the top? <laughs> oh, yeah. So you found the YouTube channel. I sent you the message. Yep. Um, again, it's cool. But we edit these. Um, and then, oh, yeah. So so after you did sign up for the course, then what happened? So I signed up for the course and I went through the material all within the span of probably about four weeks. 
And then I was looking for experience and I decided to generate my own experience with your course and started applying for jobs pretty much. But what did you do to generate your own experience? So I made my own website uh, with HostGator, like you said, and I also optimized the SEO page and also ran my own PPC account. Uh, it was fairly small, but it got it got me the technical lingo that I needed to understand. Yes. Everybody watching, my current students, prospective students, future students, you have to hear this again and again. He did not... Andrew was not managing millions of dollars of ad spend. He did what I say in the course. He built a website. He ran some ads. Very, very modest. But then what happened after you generated your experience? So after I generated my experience, I took sort of different approach. I tailored my CV with your CV template and um, added my personal touches on it. And then I started writing my own cover letters and then sending them out. But I think one of the most important things is just showing your passion when you're when you're applying for a job. Um, so when you apply for a job, what I personally did, and I've had quite a bit of su success with this when I was applying, is I'd offer a free order on the spot on the first interview or second interview. I'd prepare a lot of notes about company and just about the general industry that uh, or general knowledge that I got taught from your course, essentially. That's great. That's great. And so how did it, your, your, the position that you got right now, what, tell us how that went. Like, and, and you submitted, and so you submitted your, 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 your CV, as you guys say, or the resume and, you know, and they were, they were impressed enough with what you'd done on your own to, to get back to you. Yeah. So within the first interview, I think there were, and bear in mind, this is about out of 300 people. So I think the first uh, interview was just getting a gist of whether I knew what I was talking about. Second interview was um, finding a little bit about myself and then uh, seeing whether I fit with the culture in the company. And then the third phase of my in application was a small project. And that small project consisted of a mock task of how I would operate an account and uh, plan how I would be using ad spend and promoting a business. Um, so like a local dog food business, for example. Um, so yeah, I did that using some templates. I also got some feedback from you and I sent it off and then it was my final interview. That's that's incredible. And by the way, just not to st step over this because you're clearly being very modest. You, what did you say about three hundred people? So there was about three hundred people applying for the initial internship role, and um, I think what I did to make myself stand out was on the spot on the first interview and second interview. I did a lot of research on the company, and what I did was I tried my best to audit their homepage or their website and show them what I could implement or do differently. Let's say they weren't running LinkedIn ads. I'd be like, okay, I noticed you guys weren't running LinkedIn ads. So maybe here's a strategy or here's some reasons why you should run LinkedIn ads. Just anything to set myself apart from all the rest of the competition, essentially. Yes. You guys, you're seeing a pattern in all these interviews, right? This is, you've heard this from Andrea. You've heard it from the other Andrew. You've heard it, you know, I interviewed another Andrew this week uh, from the States. Um, you heard it again and again. And that's what I give you in the course with the, with the projects. You know, it's, it, you're going to stand out. And I've, I've heard this story before, but it's, it's pretty impressive. It's, it's not pretty, it's very impressive out of that many people applying for an internship to be, to get it. <laughs> you know, not much less, you know, to be considered and go to get to the second round, but to actually be chosen. That's really awesome. Um, so what was that like for you to, uh, cause I, I do remember you said you wrote to me and I, it was one of those times where I was like swamped with emails. So you wrote to me saying, you're thinking of purchasing the course. Next thing I knew you wrote to me and we're like, it's been a month and a half and I got this great gig. Um, what was it like to actually get hired there? So 
it was it was a relief and a joy because all that hard work that I put in and knowing something that I was passionate about and I was like trusted in worked it was it was a joy it was honestly a relief I, I couldn't thank you enough to be honest oh man you're more you're you're so welcome and uh yeah I remember you you sent me that email I was very happy for you what um I'm just going to ask you this because I know that you're you know I don't know that much about the cultural differences between like the U.S. and the U.K. or where you're from, but what was um, what was your family's take on what you were doing? Were they supportive? So, were they what was it like? So my family didn't really know what I was doing. I'll be honest with you. Um, I was kind of doing it on the sidelines, uh, but I was trying to blitz through it as fast and as like best as possible. Um, and then for them, it must have been a relief because it's my first corporate job or business job or real world job according to them uh so for them they were really really happy and you know I, i'm progressing on with my life in their eyes yeah <laughs> and how old are you again i'm 22 22 right out of university and so tell us a little bit about the actual job itself like what what are you doing there what are you learning about because i mean you've written to me and it sounds like you're you're really soaking up information and experiences at this job. Yeah. So for the first three months of internship, it was a general overview of what's SEO, what's PPC, what's uh, uh, conversion rate optimization and UX. Um, and I've got to say, a lot of it, if not all of it, was already in your course. And from that course alone, you have a base, a very good base foundation of um the knowledge is just applying it and getting the extra experience to be fluent and uh, comfortable. So anything that was taught within the first three months of introduction, it was a new course. And then afterwards, it's starting to get into the, um, the nitty gritty of the work. And I'd be managing, doing basic Google account structure audits, doing some SEO keyword research. Um, but then also I've deep dived into JavaScript and Google Tag Manager and analytics. So, yeah. That's great. And, you know, we were just talking to, I don't know if you watch these interviews, but we just talked with Kayla, who's her whole thing is Google Analytics and Tag Manager. So, you know, there's there's positions that just specialize in that. Um, and you were telling me you were learning a lot about automation. Um, you know, like I said, I, in the course, you know, I teach the fundamentals to give you the foundation to build upon. And then from there, you can specialize in all these different things. It's like, it's like learning the alphabet. You know, once you can read, then you can read all these different books, but you need the foundation. Um, so that's really awesome. Now, what? So you've been at this job really for, it's been about six months, right? Yeah, six months. And so what is the... Like they're calling it an internship. What is the plan for this position? Is it something where you get hired into a d different role? Um, what, what are your plans for this? Yeah, so in terms of the plan for the internship itself, uh, the company intends for this internship to be a stepping stone into a different position, but that's based on the results I'm getting and also uh, I've mentioned to you this before, but two presentations at the end of internship. One, what my future is looking like for the agency, and two is uh, something I can teach or something that I can present that I've learned on the internship. Okay, and so what, like, when is that happening? And what happens if they determine that you were, like, producing good results or the, you know, the positive outcome? So the positive outcome is that when I get a job, I'll get a salary increase to about £25,000. I think that's thirty-five to thirty-seven uh, USD. So I'd get a raise and then I'd also get an executive position so I can get rid of that in turn, uh, title on my LinkedIn. Yeah, we were uh, saying, um, we were say I was saying with any of you guys, by the way, and if you're, if you're interning, you know, um, you know, it's really up to you if you want to put intern on your LinkedIn. I think once you leave a position, if you've actually been doing work, you can take the internship term off because it's, it's kind of silly because in this case, it's true. It's like, this is a job, like you're an associate. 
Um, you know, if you were working for free for university credit, that's an internship. If they maybe, you know, if you weren't working full time and they didn't have you really doing much, maybe that's an internship. You're actually doing the job full time. So it's a, it's a funny, you know, different companies are different. But I said, um, you know, as soon as you change, as soon as you change that title, you're going to get more uh, attention from people. And I think you said you've already been getting some attention from people in the industry. Yeah, uh, I've already been getting a bit of attention, but just to touch upon that point, uh, one of my a close PPC executive that I'm working with um, also said that once you change your title to something like executive or get rid of that internship, you're going to get recruiters left, right, and center. And he's swamped with recruiters currently. He's what? I'm sorry. He's... <laughs> No, he's uh get, he's swamped with recruiters getting in touch with him. Um, as in like, he's got the PPC exec title and he's getting all these recruiters. And he said, if you get a position and you have a similar title, you're gonna you're gonna be getting the same thing. That actually, you know, honestly, this company, you know, it sounds like you're having a very good experience. That might be there. They might know that. <laughs> if I had if I had talented um employees and I wanted to make sure they weren't jumping ship, <laughs> I would, <clears throat> I would, you know, maybe call them an intern or, or something like that initially, but eventually I think you're going to change your title, which is great. And I think it's perfect because it sounds like you're really enjoying it and you're getting a lot of, you know, it's a perfect position when you're just out of university and you're just, you're just starting out. Um, what else was I going to ask you? I told you were saying something else about, Oh, I'm just going to repeat this, guys, because like I said, you know, you'll see with some of the UK or European people that sometimes the salaries are a little different than in the US. Sometimes they're similar. If you get up to 35, 37K, you got it again, the healthcare, <clears throat> excuse me, the healthcare and vacations in Europe are different. In America, we do not really have healthcare. <laughs> it is terrible, in my opinion. And we do not get vacations. Even at my first six figure job, you guys heard me say this. It was like great money, um, you know, I love the job, but I, I couldn't take any time off and it's very common. So, you know, that's why, and if, by the way, if you could give me a choice between, you know, a little less money and being able to take four weeks off from a job, I'd pick the four weeks personally. Um, anyway, I think I've repeated that like a lot on these interviews, so I might just cut that out. But uh it's something that always, that's what, you know, I think that's why, honestly, why America has so many entrepreneurs, because it's, it, it really is a brutal place. Like people put it on a pedestal, but it's like America costs a lot to live there. And so it's like, if you don't have money and there's like very little safety net, you know, like there's not, um, I said it, healthcare, there's, we've been fighting about that forever. Yeah. So it pushes people, people like me, like I had jobs but I was pushed into entrepreneurship because I was like, I'm not, you know, I don't feel like I, I'm taken care of at my job. Um, they definitely, you know, these digital marketing jobs have really good work-life balance in the U.S. They have, um, you know, a lot of paid time off, work from home. But, but I've never heard of one that has four or six weeks of vacation. Because <laughs> um, <clears throat> I used to meet, I think when I was traveling here in Asia, I'd always meet people from Poland or the U.K., and I'd be like, you know, what do you, I, I was, you know, I'm running my business, but like, what are you guys doing? They're like, oh, we're just on holiday. You know, I'm just, you're like, you really? Like, yeah, we're here for three, four weeks. I'm like, what? <laughs> All the Americans yes. are like, what? Yeah. Did you get, aren't you going to get fired? Um, anyway, enough about that. I'm back to you. So um, what can we say? This was, this, we kind of got right to the point. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can ask. Oh, you said you worked in catering. So you basically you were waiting tables, right? Yeah. So I was waiting tables. Yeah. And so like, yeah. So for your family's perspective, like, yeah. How do they feel seeing you go from waiting tables to working at one of these jobs? So for them, it's, I feel, I think they were super happy being, uh, as you can see, Asian and all, uh, they'd also want like a corporate business job. Uh, but for them, it was like a relief. So, you know, it's great to be, how do I put this? It's great to, you know, 
make my parents proud in that sense yeah and be more financially stable absolutely hey by the way and it's again did you change your mic or something no it's the same mic why oh is it that's interesting it got really you were kind of, you've been kind of quiet but i've noticed that that's just my speakers sometimes but then you got really loud <laughs> um so it's fine um so if you're already out of ideas i've got culture so the work-life culture um so i'm just giving you talking points uh uh because so the work-life culture it is quite flexible um you can start as early as you want and for me you can start as late as 10 p.m and every but 10 p.m 10 a.m sorry uh and then every uh, at 10.15, we'd normally have a overall meeting with the teams uh, and discussing what we're doing for the day. But everyone in the team and the company itself is wonderful. They've been welcoming. And, you know, it's all about learning in the current atmosphere I'm in. And I've personally expressed uh, my nervousness or um, imposter syndrome at some, time, at some, some points in this uh, agency. And they're like, we're not expecting you to do work on every single deadline. You can, this internship is for you to learn and take time in their words. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, then, you know, they, they calling it an internship makes sense in that way because you're getting paid to learn all the, you know, it, it happens so frequently in this industry. So it sounds very supportive. Yeah. You know, yeah. Speak a little more about that just because I know that, um, you know, you've most of my interviews are with Americans and you're from the UK and I, you know, culturally, do you, do you find that it's similar to things you heard in my other interviews? Like, it sounds like it is like people are supportive, they're patient, they're willing to teach you. They're not, you know, they're pretty progressively thinking about it. Yeah. I mean, culturally, I think it's similar. And I think in the general industry itself, um, because it's so new and it's ever changing, uh, people um, know it's a learning experience and it, it is a huge curve to get up to because there is no university course teaching this. Uh, I had a colleague or one of my mentors say that the things I knew um, and were taught from your course are not the things that he knew 10, 15 years ago. So there is a, it's ever changing, ever shifting. And, you know, it's great to be in an environment that's constantly changing and you're constantly taking information and it's brilliant in that sense. That's great. And so, and I never asked you, what did you major in? And did you major in marketing or some type of business thing? Uh, I majored in English literature. So yeah, I, being honest, I I didn't know why I took the I, I majored in English. I kind of took the university route because it's what's expected and it's what um, you're let down through the pipeline. And then the more I do my job and the more experience I get in the real world, the more I realize employees and just businesses don't care about your degree as much. It is a nice baseline, don't get me wrong, but they more care about one, your attitude and two, your experience. Experience is king in this sense. That's really, that's, I mean, that I would have asked you that next. You just reminded me. So yeah, in the, it, some people think in Europe, it's different with the degrees, but you just said it's not, it's the same as the U S where they really don't, they really don't care. Um, <laughs> that wasn't really a question. What, uh, do you, do you know your, your coworkers, do they all have degrees or are, do you know any that don't? Um, so I think a lot of my coworkers have degrees, but they've all majored in something different, like computer science or psychology, for example, English. So it it all varies. You don't need to specialize into business or marketing to get into a job like this. Um, I think the most important thing is just having an attitude to learn and just absorb information but it's nothing you haven't said in the course. So it just feels like I'm reciting the course. 
I don't mind. I think it's great when you guys, you know, when you own, you know, you learn it, you own it, and then you're, you're living it in your life, you know? Um, you know, it's, you're just, it, it's a great example, a great inspiration. People love to hear these stories. I love hearing them. Um, and again, I love hearing it when it's happening in another country because that just shows how global this skill set is. Um, let me see. Yeah, we really got right to it. It's about 30 minutes. Um, well, here's what I always ask people. Say, is there anything you want to say uh, to the people watching the interview, um, you know, people considering the course, people in the U.S., people in the U.K., anybody? Yeah, I've got a few things. So if you're thinking the course is right for you, I do think the course is amazing value for money. Um, it teaches you everything I've been taught in the first three months of uh, my agency, but also a quick tip for everyone that's looking for jobs out there um, and has reached out to me on LinkedIn. The most important thing is applying yourself. Make sure you have your audits on hand. Make sure you've gone above and beyond researching the company and just putting yourself out there because the more times you put yourself out there, the more times you can, and the more times you get rejected because I've been rejected quite a few times. Don't give up because it's always a learning experience and the more you learn from it, the more you improve yourself. That's, that's the goal in something like this. And, you know, I can, I couldn't be more thankful of taking your course on a whim essentially as well. So thank you, Seth. You're welcome, Andrew. I, I appreciate that. I really get it. Uh, it's my pleasure. And, um, <clears throat> and well said, well said about it because yeah, you really, you know, when you guys see um, somebody being successful, it's because they really worked hard and they did go through rejections. <laughs> you know, everybody had, you can't write, you know, I submitted my first application, I didn't get accepted and I'm done. You know, it's not how you have success and you really do need to do everything I teach you to do and tell you to do. You have to do the bonus. They're not bonus. They're part of the application process. Remember, I'm teaching you guys how to stand out. Like Andrew said, I'm not teaching you how to like take some quick notes and like start you know, applying. And I'm also not teaching you to like overthink it and never apply. Like you said, you really do want to keep applying, keep learning, but do the work, build your skill set, learn, put your projects together so that when you present yourself to these employers, you stand out like Andrew did. And um, that's what I'm teaching. And uh, yeah, so that's just a little, my little spiel about my course. Um, but thanks, Andrew, for, for sharing yourself. And, um, and, uh, and you're welcome. It is, it is my absolute pleasure. And I, I'm very excited to see where you go next. But in, in, before that, you know, just continue to enjoy and um, we're going to keep in touch. Thanks. You too, sir.